Over 90% of people who begin the jiu-jitsu journey never make it to blue belt. And 99% of people who make it to blue never make it to black. So I'm going to talk about my path or my journey uh, to earning my black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And it's a very significant achievement to me, I'd say probably one of my greatest achievements in my life. And if you train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or BJJ, you understand the, you understand, uh, the significance of something of that magnitude. I started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in 2009. Now, to keep this video short, I'm not going to go into like my philosophy behind Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and you know uh, anything deep in that sense because that is could be a whole nother video and probably will be a whole nother video. I just want to talk about my path, like how long it took and what steps and the kind of the journey to earning my black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So like I said, I started in 2009. I started at American Top Team here in um, Colorado, in Aurora, Colorado actually. Uh, Bobby Lashley had opened a American Top Team here. Uh, so we were very excited and initially I had taken my son to do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I was interested as well, but you know, I, you know, I didn't quite know if I was gonna get involved, but I just needed to get him into martial arts. So it started with him attending classes, and then eventually I started attending classes and just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, I, I know that when I first started, it, it was grueling, and anyone who does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they know, it's like in the first few months, you either stick with it or you, you don't. I mean, it's, it's not one of those things that it's, you know, you, you you're kind of halfway about it. Anyway, I started there under Roberto Skoka. Uh, then there was Andre Rizama took over for a little bit. Uh, Chilo Gonzalez had to run our classes for a while. So there was uh, quite a few instructors in and out for the first year and a half. So earning my stripes, I had a, a few different ways of having to go about earning my stripes in my white belt. But it wasn't, you know, we didn't have a consistent instructor, but I just loved jujitsu so much that I just, I didn't care. I just wanted to learn. Ranks were important, but I figured that they would sort it out eventually. And in the meantime, I would just focus on getting really good at it. Eventually, uh, we had a steady, about year two, eventually we had a steady instructor, uh, Derek Ripley. Now he, I think he was a purple belt at the time, so he was not a black belt or professor, uh, but he had, you know, he was an MMA fighter. He had about 10, 10 years of experience in no gi, and he finally started grappling in a gi. And then I think he was a purple belt when he started teaching our classes. And the knowledge he was bringing to our classes was just, it was unreal. So you knew this this guy knew his stuff, and I learned a lot under him. Shortly after training with Derek for a while, he brought in um, his professor from Florida, Ethan Day, Professor Ethan Day, who was a professor. Uh, who was a black belt under uh, Hanato Tavares. So um, about this mark, I'm, it's about past two years into jiu-jitsu, about two and a half years, and I'm kind of sitting here thinking, all right, I'm probably going to be white belt for life because we weren't settling in on, a, on an official professor who could actually give us belt promotions. So I'm, I also started competing, and I'm doing very well. And uh, when... Professor Ethan Day comes in, you know, he's a new professor, he doesn't quite know us all yet, uh, but Derek was telling Ethan, you know, this guy's been around for 
almost three years now, and he's not, you know, he deserves a blue belt. And Ethan is, is basically like, I don't know him yet, so we'll see how he does in the next tournament. At this point, um, Derek is telling him that they're starting to believe that I'm sandbagging in tournaments because I'm just running through everyone. I believe the tournament I did before Ethan came to Colorado, I ran through all my matches in about 10 or 15 seconds. I submitted everyone about 10 or 15 seconds. So my total matches combined was about a minute and 15 seconds of competition time. So, And this is at white belt. And again, I, I was a white belt for three years. So I'm three years into being a white belt. I seriously only have three stripes uh, because Derek isn't giving us stripes because he's not sure. So uh, Professor Ethan comes in and we train for him a bit and he sees that we're raw and we need a lot of, you know, back to fundamentals, a lot of instruction, but we're good. You know, we've been training, we know our stuff. Uh, he, he tells us what the blue belt test entails and tells us how we could go about getting our blue belt. So we start practicing and training up for that. So then I go do another tournament under Professor Ethan at this time, Professor Ethan Day, and again, just wipe out the competition. So when I step off the mat, Ethan is standing there, and he has a hoodie on. He pulls a blue belt out of his hoodie, and he promotes me on the spot right after winning my, my final match. And, you know, it's an emotional time, man, and, and I just was so grateful for that, and it was such a surprise. And then from there, you know, I trained with Ethan for about, you know, he's our professor for a year and a half, maybe, you know, and I learn a lot. I learn a lot as a blue belt under him. Um, as things go, the gym's transitioning. Ethan's looking for new opportunities. So, and his, uh, his fiance, they're moving to a new area in Colorado. So he ends up going to a different, to teach at a different school. Uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, have Professor Henry Mata Morris move into Colorado, and he's looking for a place to teach. So we have Henry come in and start, you know, running a couple classes, training with us, and it's a different style of jujitsu. Not, it's still jujitsu, still Brazilian jujitsu, but it's a different style and compared to, like the hard nose. Like I'd say under Ethan, it was almost like Cobra Kai, the way we were training. Um, it was very hard nosed. Um, he wanted a competition team, and he trained us like that. And some people can thrive under that, you know, in the lion's den, and some, some, but it was hard to bring in new members. I'm not knocking it. I'm grateful for everything I learned because I learned that way of grappling. Professor Henry comes in and he's coming from a more old school Gracie style. Professor Henry Mata Morris is a uh, black belt under Professor uh, Pedro Sauer, right? Who's, who is up there when it comes to the Gracie pedigree of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So Professor Henry's coming in and he's teaching us more open guard, more flow more martial arts mindset, not so much competition and sport jujitsu, competition, sport, or like the fighting mindset. Remind you, I'm, I want to remind you, we were at American Top Team, so we have an MMA gym with a, a fight team, and the fight guys are doing jujitsu, so it's, it's kind of hard-nosed, heavy competition-type classes. So some of the guys are a little worried when Professor Henry comes in because he's bringing in a more traditional martial arts style, a more traditional way of doing jujitsu. The transition is not too difficult. It didn't take long for us to see the value in the way that Professor Henry teaches his jujitsu. And this was more of a flowing style. Uh, he's, he's famous for his open guard. And so we're learning real Brazilian jujitsu. Not that anything I learned before was fake. What I'm trying to say is, like, I think at this level from blue to purple, you know, white you're just learning to survive, you're learning the fundamentals, you're falling in love with it, hopefully. By blue, you're starting to like develop like a pressure game, maybe learning how to hold positions, you're learning submissions, you're really learning jujitsu, like really. Um, and then starting to see what your style may be, may, what your style might end up being. So uh, I do another year of blue belt under Professor Henry and he's changing my life. He's changing the way I see Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The, the way, the flow, and just following the energy of the opponent and not having to be so like hard-nosed and grind out, grind people into the, into the mat. You know, I still had that whenever I needed it, but he was teaching us, you know, the, just, just more, more open guard, more sweeps, all the opportunities that you gain from that type of Jiu-Jitsu. Basically, as a heavyweight, I'm learning small man jiu-jitsu, which I'm loving because I'm pulling this off on 
heavyweights and small, and it's just not, it's costing me less energy. I'm just understanding Brazilian Jiu Jitsu better. And my game is just evolving. So hit the two year mark and of, of blue belt and professor Henry surprises us one day. He shows up, uh, you know, he tells us that we're, we have to get ready for purple belt, me and my friend, Alex Huddleston. And he gives us a sheet of moves and it's got about 120 moves on it. And it's from Pedro Sauer. And he says, okay, you have to learn all these moves and I'm going to ask you to show me some of them, but you won't know which ones. So be prepared to, to show all of them because you don't know which ones I'm going to ask for. Prior to this, I hadn't tested for a belt yet, right? I, I, when I'm under Roberto Skoka, I had to do a test for a stripe. Some people, you know, everyone has a different way of promoting people. Just like there's different philosophies regarding Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, there's different styles of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So Alex and I are prepping for this for our purple belt. We're the, we're the four stripe blue belts on the team and we're very excited about like getting our purple belt. So we're, we're, te- we're training, we're training, but we have no idea when, when we might have, when we ha- are going to have our opportunity to test for our purple belt. So I show up on a Saturday and I'm sparring. So my Saturday routine was I ran the, the, fit, the strength and conditioning boot camp in the morning. So we did that. So I lifted weights in the morning and ran that class. And then we had sparring after. So then we sparred and I sparred yeah, 12, 12 rounds, 12, 15 rounds. So I'm exhausted. And then I see Professor Henry walk in, who usually doesn't come in on Saturdays. And then my wife comes in. And my wife never comes to the gym back then. So my wife comes in. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And then more and more people start showing up. And before I know it, we have like this impromptu jiu-jitsu class. More of the teammates are there or that, you know, we didn't have jiu-jitsu on Saturdays back then. Then, out of nowhere, here's your, your purple belt test. Roll with everyone in the class. So we have to roll... I have to roll with all my teammates. They're lined up on the wall and Professor Henry is swapping them out. And Alex and I have to roll for 45 minutes straight. And he's watching us with everyone. And this is after the the completely exhausting morning that we've had. And you just have to do it. So you're rolling and man, you're you're just dying and just trying to stay alive, right? After the 45 minute roll, we survive of rolling for 45 minutes with various teammates, um, 40 burpees. So he's like, okay, do 40 burpees. So then we have to knock out 40 burpees. You can barely breathe. You can barely stand. After that, he puts us in the middle of the class and he says, then he, he starts calling off random moves out of that list of 120 moves that we had been practicing for weeks. Fortunately, the six moves that he called, we knew every single one of them. So we completed that. And... Then he promoted us. So at this point, I'm a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'm still with the American top team. Again, worlds shift, lives change. I, I, need to, I end up having to leave the school. Um, on the side of my Jiu-Jitsu, I was doing a lot of Muay Thai. I traveled to Thailand. I was training with Master Tran here in Colorado. And I was looking to uh, do the things that were going on American top team. The gym wasn't it was, it was going in a certain direction as far as it, it was going to be closing down soon. So I left to open up my own Muay Thai school. So doing that, I ended up leaving my professor. I didn't know who I was going to be training with. I, I, was, I wanted to be able to offer Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in my new school, my Muay Thai school, but I didn't know if that was permitted being a, like a, at that time, I think I was a four-stripe purple belt. So I didn't know what I was allowed to do. So I just offered submission grappling, which was just no gi. So I'm teaching that out of my school. I'm, I go to Thailand. I train there for a while. And while I'm in Thailand, I'm training with uh, Professor Christopher Vamos. Uh, he's running the, the uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu program over at Tiger Muay Thai when I'm there training. And I learn a lot from him. From there, I'm floating around because Professor Henry still an American top team. They hadn't quite closed down yet. I'm loyal to Professor Henry, but... The, the, the situation just doesn't allow for me to train with him. Uh, I am also very focused. I, I'm kind of not spending as much time on my jiu-jitsu because I'm very focused on my Muay Thai because I opened a Muay Thai school. So I'm, I'm training that. I'm learning that. I'm teaching that. So my focus is shifting where more focus on Muay Thai and less focus on Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, then in 2016 while we're doing an open roll at my school, I, I take an inadvertent knee 
Now let me preface this with saying that I have a condition called keratoconus and I have a corneal transplant. So I have a, a transplanted cornea. Now i had been training for six years at this point with no issues. I shouldn't have been training at all or I should have had some kind of protective headgear or goggles on but it just never present, it never presented itself to be a problem. So through that carelessness and then just a perfectly placed knee and it was just so random but the knee hit me in the eye at just the right velocity and the right angle and it just ripped my transplanted cornea out and so my eye rips open and falls out and I lose my eye. So obviously emergency surgeries and whatnot. So for the next 18 months, you know, I'm basic, I'm blind because I was already blind in my left eye. So this is my right eye that I now, I now have lost. So I'm adjusting to things. I'm trying to move on with my life in the process of trying to maintain vision of some sort. I have, I go through about seven surgeries over the course of about 18 months to just give me vision, not, not even decent vision, just vision. So after all those surgeries, I finally, there's a surgeon in Cincinnati who's able to have a, a prosthetic iris, so a prosthetic iris, which is why I lost my iris and I lost my lens, uh, but my retina was still attached, so I still have vision. But I can't quite grapple, obviously. You know, I've 30 stitches in my head, in my eye, just, just can't, can't risk. So I've, I basically have to walk away for about a year. Walked away for about a year. But I, got, I started doing it again with goggles, and I just had to wear a headgear to hold the goggles in place, and still just keeping it light, not, not heavy into it, and still not quite training with any specific professor. Um, professor Henry had opened his own school after American Top Team, by this time after American Top Team had closed. So I was in and out with his team, um, but no, no specific training place. So this surgeon in Cincinnati is the only surgeon in the United States who's doing this fellowship, this experimental surgery with a prosthetic eye, basically, a prosthetic iris that he has, they had made in Germany. So I fly back and forth to Cincinnati eight, ten times over the course of a year as they're running tests and checking in on things, and then having my cornea, or excuse me, my new iris made in Germany, Clear Customs come back, come into the United States, and he, he gets the exemption through the FDA to give me this experimental surgery. Through the experimental surgery, he gives me my vision back in that eye. So I, and in the, in the, in the interim, when I was blind in this eye through keratoconus, I did have uh, intact silicone inserts put into my eye, prosthetics inserts, to help my vision there, which really helped a lot. So at this point after that experiment surgery, boom, I have prosthetics in both eyes. Should not be doing anything that I'm doing. Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, all that. But I just can't stay away. At one point I considered maybe I have to walk away or go blind. But I just can't. So I figure it out. I get try all these different types of goggles, try different ways to keep them strapped to my head. Ultimately, it ends up being me wearing goggles with a gold BJJ head care, which by the way, if it comes to grappling head care, I, my preference and what I've found works best when it comes to BJJ is the gold, the gold BJJ grappling head gear. Anyway, strapping that in um, with the goggles seems to hold them in place and I resume my training. So I'm training with different professors, just getting the work in where I can. Um, as I travel, I'm training in different places. I, I, at some point, I trained a little bit uh, with Simgo over at uh, Cobra Kai in Vegas. I'm training here in Colorado. Uh, Easton schools are big here, so I'm popping in and out of Easton schools. But I still don't have a clear professor. So then um, I wanted to resume having BJJ. When I, I open a new Muay Thai gym, a larger Muay Thai gym, I want to offer BJJ. But I don't feel that I'm allowed to do that, right? But I keep in touch with Professor Henry. He closes down his school um, and he just trains at a few of his affiliates. So I bring him in for seminars and whatnot and he sees that I'm still training and all the things that I'm doing. And so he rewards me with my brown belt for overcoming everything and for continuing my training and for all the things that I've, I was doing 
um, for my path to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And so I'm so humbled and grateful because I just didn't know if I'd ever get promoted again because I couldn't settle in with any particular professor because I'm running my own school at this point. So now I'm a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I still don't feel that I can run a legitimate, not, not illegitimate, a, accredited maybe a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu program without having a black belt on site. Now, I had become an affiliate under Professor Henry. So we were an affiliate under Matamoros BJJ, which is, you know, he, he comes in and does the seminars and he promotes people when I need him to. Uh, but I teach the classes as a brown belt. Uh, many schools do this under affiliations. But I just still felt like I wanted a black, black belt in-house. So I look out and a black belt that I know, amazing, amazing black belt, Pat Garland, um, is leaving the school that he's teaching at and he's looking for a place to teach. And I hire him. He takes over the BJJ program here at Rad Muay Thai and he is just absolutely amazing. So boom, I'm under another black belt and I'm learning again. Um, and I don't have, it's not teaching anymore. I get to be just a student. I just get to show up to class and learn and I don't have to go anywhere else because it's happening in my school. So for two years, um, he's teaching here and he is just the most amazing, one of the best black belts I've ever worked with next to Professor Henry. So then I, I feel confident training under him and I just have to get over this hump with my injury and everything and and then I realize that I've, I've meddled because, you know, all this time I haven't talked about that, but I compete in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And throughout this time, I've meddled as a white belt, multiple medals, multiple medals at blue belt, multiple medals at purple belt. And I'm like, okay, should I? And then, of course, during this time, beyond just meddling at every belt leading up to this, I, I'm in my 40s at this point. I turned 40. Um, I'm not cutting weight because I used to go down one weight class. And I'm not cutting weight in my 40s. I just decided to go heavy, like at the heaviest weight that I walk around at. I just decided to compete at the weight in another division in a new belt rank. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going up a rank. I'm going up a weight class. And I'm in a new division as far as age. So I'm like, you know what? Pat is such an amazing professor. I feel so confident in my jiu-jitsu. Let me go hit some open mats and see how I do. So I go hit these open mats and I'm crushing it. And I'm just like, oh my God, you know, I'm I think I might be back up to that level I was when I was actively competing prior to like having to scatter my focus across Muay Thai and owning a business and all these different things. So at this time I decide I'm going to compete. Let me just see what's what out there. I go out there and it's a different type brown belt. You know, each one is levels. If by purple belt, you're developing your game, you're learning like some slick jujitsu and you're, you're really starting to, you basically create the type of jiu-jitsu guy that you are, the type of BJJ grappler that you are. I truly believe that at Purple Belt, you are honing into that. And by the time you, you're a brown belt, you have locked into something as far as the game that you have. And you're still learning, of course. Um, I did feel like the level jump as far as the type of jiu-jitsu that you're going up against, it's slicker. It's not all just like uh, rough and tough. It's, it's very technical, which as it should be at that level. So I go in, two matches, I win them both, gold medal. Very happy, I don't need to prove anything else. Um, so we go back to just training and having fun. So Professor Pat Garland is teaching here, we're having a great time, everything's going well. So I'm three years into my brown belt at this point. Isolation hits, close the school down, dealing with all of that, trying to keep my head above water, trying to figure out how we're gonna come out of this and, and not have to close permanently. I won't go into all those details. I'll do that in another video series. But we come out of it. We, we reopen when the world reopens. And we're doing good. We're starting to build back up. Um, Pat moves on to, you know, his life took him in a different direction during isolation. As it did with several people. Uh, again, gyms and lives and things shift around. So he's not in, in a position to come back and teach here full time. So... Plus, we're not in a position to really host any BJJ classes. We were able to, to do Muay Thai in a very scattered way uh, and, and other fitness classes, but BJJ is just too intimate. And given the restrictions that we were following under Tri-County Health here in Colorado, we weren't allowed to do a lot of things, so we just did not bring BJJ back. So maybe after five months after reopening, 
we finally decided we have an opportunity to do it as long as we're mass. So we slowly start to integrate it. And I decide I need to get back to teaching. So I take the classes over and start teaching jujitsu again. And I rediscover my love for teaching jujitsu. I really enjoyed being a student again. Uh, but I also love, love being an instructor again. And I realized that now it's a matter of this, this next year, this new season of my jiu-jitsu journey is about re, like honing and sharpening my skills as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu instructor again. I don't believe I ever really lost it, but I did see the opportunity to be much better at it. As I'm teaching and then coming into this uh, new year, 2021, I've, I reach out to Professor Henry. It's about that time to have him host a seminar. And we start talking and I, I, I ask him, I say, sir, um, how do I go about getting my black belt at this point? You know, I hadn't really mentioned it in a long time because I didn't feel deserving of, of, of it. Honestly, deep down, I, I kind of still don't feel deserving of it. So I let him, I just wanted to plant the seed. Okay, sir, put me on a path. What requirements will you need so that over the course of the next year or two or whatever it takes to get there, I know what I need to do to get to my black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So he starts walking me through the requirements under Professor Sauer, um, what, what, would, what that entails. Um, and then what his requirements will be. We shoot things back and forth. I schedule him for his seminar. Um, and then he wants me to come to his house to talk about it more. So when I say shoot things back and forth, there was these, these specific self-defense moves and specific testing things that Professor Pedro Sauer requires of his black belts that Professor Henry wanted me to, to do. And so I'm doing those things. And I'm, pra I'm practicing and thinking that he wants, he's going to have me do them in front of him. Um, but I'm shooting videos to him of me doing the moves, making sure that I'm doing them properly because we live pretty far apart. Uh, not pretty far apart, about an hour apart, but we have our lives, separate lives, and we're both, we're both busy. So so then after that, he, he wants me to meet him at his house to discuss all of it. So we sit down and we have a great discussion and we train a little bit and we talk about philosophy. He wants to know what I've been up to and what's my philosophy of teaching my students. And we talk about loyalty and we have a great conversation. Um, what I don't realize is it's part of the test. So he's showing me the moves and he's talking to me about philosophy and he says, okay, we will see. Um, Brad, I feel like you're ready, but there are a few more things that I still need to see. I, I only have six black belts, you know, because Professor Henry has got five stripes in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under Pedro Sauer. So he is a very high ranked Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. And I tell him that I don't want to go to another school and start taking classes there to work towards a black belt under a different professor. Professor Henry Morris is my jiu-jitsu. He, he has shaped my philosophy. He has shaped my belief in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And I, and I respect his lineage. And I wanted to be a Henry Morris black belt. I did not want to get that under anyone else. And I wanted to be clear with him that tell me how I can go about doing that because you're the professor. I want to earn my black belt from it matters. It's important to me that that is where you are the person that I am awarded my black belt from. So again, over the course of another couple of weeks, we're, it, we're talking back and forth where he's telling me what, what's what and he's saying, okay, we'll see, we'll see. So he shows up for the seminar and then before the seminar starts, he pulls me off to the side and he's like, um, here's what I, I may want from a test and he asked me to show him this, show, the, show me the break falls, show me the top seven, my favorite top seven top positions and bottom positions and sweeps and, then, and I think we're just kind of going through the motions as far as he's just educating me further on what I will have to do for a test that will come later. Then he wants me to warm up the class because he hasn't been to the school in over a, two years almost. So he wants to see me warm up the class. He wants to see me teach the class a little bit. And then he takes over and does his seminar. He watches me uh, interact with the students. Um, and then at the end of the seminar, about two, three hours in, he pulls me up, you know, to thank everyone and tell me how great the students are. And then he honors me deeply, again, with one of the greatest things I've earned in my life with my black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I didn't, I had no idea it was coming. I kept assuming there was going to be a, a, an actual official test to come later. But what he tells my students is that he had been testing me all along. And I think the final thing was to see how my class, how my students behave and how my class is and how my school is run. And that was the last thing he wanted to see. And it's just one of the greatest moments of my life. I mean, I mean, I cannot stop hugging this guy. Before he leaves, 
he grabs my belt like this. He grabs my belt and he says, you're going to do great things. I expect a lot from you. And it's one of the most beautiful, I just can't explain. I mean, obviously I'm getting emotional. And to have someone that I respect and love so much, someone that I wanted to be honored by so much, to not just honor me with this promotion, but to say that to me, the trust that that, that, he, that, that shows that he's putting in me and the belief he has in what I can achieve. Life changing. My life is already amazing and what I what I, I what I've built and what I can do in the in the life that I leave now I'm living my best life and this has just added so much more to my already amazing life that that I've been able to to build and live. You know, there's times I just don't I don't feel like I deserve it cuz you know, there's just there's so there's levels to anything. There's some exceptional black belts, and there's some, and I just don't know where I line up. And so, my students, I still don't have them calling me professor. Um, I, I haven't quite eased into that title yet, but I know that earning my black belt is the beginning of another journey. It's not the end at all. It's the start. Now, my goal is to be a great black belt, and that is not a great black belt as far as and sports jujitsu or all that. Like, I want to be a great black belt as far as just being great at jujitsu, but also being an exceptional instructor and professor to my students and growing my team into a, a great community, an amazing culture. I want to have a great culture and have a great community and turn them into great BJJ uh, grapplers, um, but also great people through grappling. And that's how I will be uh, how I will grow as a black belt. So I know that video was long and I'm sorry, but again, if you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know how long it takes to get a black belt, you know, minimum 10 years, right? Some people 10, 16. I know one guy has 20 years, you know, in and out, um, 10, 16 years. There are some people who, you know, they pour everything into it and they six, eight years nowadays, the game has changed a little bit. But if you know, you know. So there was a lot to cover. If you watched this video all the way through, I thank you. I'm grateful to you for listening to my journey. And I hope it inspired you if you have started your journey in the middle of your journey, or even if you're a black belt, okay? I know our paths are probably different. But I just, I just felt like this was something to put up because I know when I was doing jujitsu, I searched a lot of different things and I like to hear a lot of different stories. Um, and it just got me motivated. So I hope maybe this motivated you. Look, if you, if you enjoyed the video and if you are, you know, a regular watcher or if you're a new watcher, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Um, we do a, an array of things on this channel and maybe you'll find something you like. So give us some love. As always, keep fighting for fit, no excuses, and we'll see you in the next video.